What's going on guys, Angus here. I just wanted to apologise for the lack of sort of regular, recent high quality videos here in Makers Muse. I haven't really been up to scratch for what I sort of strive to create for you. So I put the time together to make sort of a, a logo and a better format um, and template for my videos. So I hope you like it. So have you seen, pulling files from video games is actually quite easy. And once you've got them fixed and ready to printing, it's not that difficult. But although the file might be 100% perfect, it still might fail. And this is because of simple mathematics. When you get something and scale it down, everything becomes much smaller. So imagine you have a sword, say the Zwei, for example. It's like, say, 3 to 10 millimeters in thickness. At full size, you know, tempered steel, whatever, it's going to be really strong. But scale it down to, say, 1 to 20 or whatever that our sort of scale model dude might be, and it comes down to sort of 0.15 to 0.5 millimeters thick. And there's no way that's even going to print, even if it could print on a high detail machine, it would probably bend and break almost instantly. So what you need to do to these files is something called thickening, and that's where you artificially add thickness to certain areas of your model so it prints strongly and correctly. Uh, this is especially true as well in architectural models, so imagine you have a model of a house, and you scale it down to 1 to 200 or something, those walls of the house become paper thin and they're not going to work unless you add thickness to them. So I'm going to show you three ways you can do this in Mesh Mixer, which is really uh, quite easy to do. Mesh Mixer, again, it's free, it's super powerful, and they each have their pros and cons, so let's go through them. So firstly, you need to make sure your file is error-free and manifold. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video quite shortly on hardcore STL repairing, but until then, just run your file through the NetFab cloud service to make sure it's pretty good before sticking into Mesh Mixer and doing this thickening. So the first option we're going to try is the Extrude tool. So this is quite a simple, fast way to add thickness to your entire model or certain areas of it. So to use Extrude, select the faces you want to thicken using the Sphere Brush or the Lasso tool. Then you want to go to Edit and Extrude, and the Extrude type you want is Constant. So this is going to thicken pretty much the entire model consistently, and you can enter any number you want. I'm going to try you know, 0.5 for this model, for example. And you can see it thickens it up quite nicely and it retains a sharp edge, which is really nice as well. But it thickens everything, so it's not very intelligent. It might thicken stuff that you don't really need to be thicker. So next is the Make Solid tool. So this tool effectively will try to combine all your different shells and parts into the one solid object. But you can actually use it to, to semi-intelligently add thickness to your model as well. So with the Make Solid tool, you want to change the setting to, to accurate and ramp up all the quality and mesh density settings. And then go to select Minimum Thickness. And you want to choose you know, maybe 0.5 again, and then uh, update it and see how it goes. So you see it, it will just remove any sort of sharp edges and make everything to a minimum of 0.5. But it works best for organic objects. It's not working very well for the sword here, because it's removing all the sharp, chamfered edges. But if you've got an organic shape where you want to thicken just some certain areas and make it nicely organically flow on to the thicker areas, then this uh, makes all the tool works quite well. And finally, there's a little gem hidden away in the print options for Mesh Mixer. You want to click on Repair, and you'll see the Fix for Minimum Thickness option. It seems to work like a hybrid of Extrude and Make Solid, and I've found it's one of the best options in Mesh Mixer if it doesn't crash on you. But you can see here it's thickened up the sword and the handles quite nicely, but it's left the hilt untouched. So it's a sort of a nice balance between the two, and it works really well uh, for pre preparing your files and making them quite nice and printable. So there you have it, a few ways to make your very delicate STL files a bit more printable and a bit stronger. So watch out for stuff like sort of hands, fingers, hair, sort of belts and accessories, as well as the weapons, because those are areas that often need to be thickened up before printing. So thanks for watching, guys. As I said at the start of this video, I'm going to be trying to really make great, high-quality content for you. Got the logo, got the intro, and now I'm just going to do awesome content for you guys. Feel free to subscribe. I do sort of um, STL editing videos as well as uh, ripping files from games and 3D printing tips and tricks all the time. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again here soon on Makers Muse. Bye.